It's going to be a really interesting future for Star Wars games. And the reason for this is because of Unreal Engine 5, which went into public beta May of this year. But why am I making such a big deal out of it? Well, take a look at this. In just two and a half weeks of this engine being released to the public, this is what Star Wars fans have been able to create in the new game development engine. This and many other Unreal Engine 5 projects look so good it could be mistaken for a triple A game in development. But why is Unreal Engine 5 such a big deal for specifically Star Wars games? What do official game developers get out of this? What do fan made Star Wars games get out of this? Providing they don't get DMCA'd. And what could Star Wars movies potentially get out of this too? We'll be talking about two massive things that are coming to Unreal Engine 5 that can contribute to these reasons I just mentioned. But before we get into it, hey, my name's Charlie, otherwise known as Family Bovine, and we're just shy of 3,000 users joining our Discord. If you're looking to play Star Wars Empire at War, Star Wars Squadrons, or Star Wars Battlefront 2 with like-minded Star Wars fans, be sure to join our Discord in the pinned comment down below. We have voice and text chats dedicated to each game respectively so you'll always find people to play with. But with that all said and done, let's dive into why Unreal Engine 5 is a big deal for Star Wars games. Unreal Engine 5 comes with a slew of new features, from a new UI look and feel, world partitioning, and new animation tools. However, there are two massive features that I have not mentioned. One is Lumen, and the other, which is going to have the biggest impact for Star Wars games, Nanite. So first up, what is Lumen? Now, for the people that are curious, Lumen is a new advanced lighting technique in Unreal Engine 5, which can produce hyper-realistic lighting, no matter the geometry, with minimal processing power. For example, this is the scene that you get in Unreal Engine 4, and this is what you get in Unreal Engine 5. Notice the stark difference? The light coming off the walls are bouncing all over the room on all objects nearby, something that is more true to real life. Not only is this advanced lighting feature incredibly optimized, it's also really easy to implement in any game in Unreal Engine 5. Jedi Fallen Order was made in Unreal Engine 4, so whilst it wouldn't necessarily be this straightforward, a lighting engine like this for Jedi Fallen Order running in Unreal Engine 5 would look absolutely absolutely phenomenal. Now we have seen something like this via mods in Jedi Fallen Order before. One of the biggest mods for Jedi Fallen Order, perfect cinema lighting, but it's using a sub mod called Reshade and it's incredibly taxing on high graphics cards, but it could give us a little bit of a look at what we can expect in the next Jedi Fallen Order game. Let's move on to the feature that I want to focus on in today's video, that being Nanite. Nanite is just as complex, if not more advanced than Lumen. Nanite essentially allows developers to drop in movie quality models straight into their game without having to worry about optimizing it. 3D models in games consist of polygons, very, very small triangles that build out an entire shape. So as shown here, you build out the polygons, you add the shading, then you add the textures. Games have to keep their polygons low so the games can run effectively. But in Unreal Engine 5, Nanite will intelligently remove triangles that the player cannot see at that moment in time. Meaning that Nanite kind of does the optimization for you just in a different way. I won't be surprised if there's a lot more tinkering needed to be done when importing models and using Nanite. But I'll be blown away if it's as simple as just importing in a ZBrush or Blender model straight into the engine. But from the official video from Unreal Engine, here you can see they're crunching down the entire geometry into 20 million triangles. And yet the detail and shading here looks phenomenal. It just goes to show how intelligent AI algorithms are now and how it's now impacting video games. What the guys behind Unreal Engine aren't telling you though, is that Nanite has some caveats. That being Nanite unable to work with meshes that stretch, squeeze or malform in a certain way for animation. For example, let's go back to Jedi Fallen Order. Take a look at the Cal model and take a look at his legs. His leg meshes bend and squeeze in certain ways much like normal legs would. Nanite can't work with transforming meshes like this. They can only work with static geometry. This is why a lot of the tech demos we're seeing from Unreal Engine are in places like deserts. This is because most of the surrounding is rocks and rubble. Rocks don't change their geometry in any way, they're solid objects. For example, Nanite wouldn't be that effective in a forest scenario. 
With the grass animations blowing along with the breeze and the trees shaking and animating in the distance, Nanite can't work with those sort of things. So if Nanite can only work with static meshes and can't work with say animated character skeletal meshes, then why in this demo for Unreal Engine 5, we can see this character which is using Nanite animate and move around? Well, thanks to a channel called Unreal Sensei, he found out that the character consists mostly of static meshes, that being part of rocks or broken statues choose things that are not meant to bend or deform in any way, and they're attached to a dummy skeletal mesh which you cannot see. So they're using a fair bit of trickery here, making you think it can work for characters when in fact it definitely doesn't. Thanks to the footage from Unreal Sensei, we can see all of the robot's body parts, and it all consists of ancient relics made of rock. So now that I've given you a crash course in Unreal Engine 5, why does this matter to Star Wars games? The answer? Well, spaceships. Star Wars is chock full of them. Ships that don't bend, stretch or malform in any way, shape or form. They're static meshes until they're effectively destroyed and broken apart. Take a look at these incredible Imperial Star Destroyer designs from the Rogue One film. The detail and lighting just looks incredible, like it belongs in a film. But with Unreal Engine 5, logically speaking, we could theoretically take that ISD model from the film and just plonk it straight into the engine and it should work almost flawlessly. So providing epic games who make Unreal Engine isn't lying to us, we could see some space battle based Star Wars games looking just incredible. So if we take Imperial Star Destroyer designs from say Thrawn's Revenge, Awaken the Rebellion or Empire War Remake, we can see each ship has their own distinct design but has to be downscaled in polys so it can actually run on most people's computers. Now take a look back at the ISD from Rogue One. It's definitely a big stark difference, especially for Star Wars games that are going for hyper realism. And hey, if you don't believe me, take another look at what people are making Star Wars related in Unreal Engine 5. Content creator Dyson made this demo in Unreal Engine 5 in a matter of days. Imagine if Star Wars fans had two and a half months. Another person who I'm really excited to see what he'll do with Unreal Engine 5 is none other than Unreal Cinema, who actually remade the KOTOR opening sequence in Unreal Engine 5. And in his video, you can see step by step what it takes to make something like that. He's already done insane work in Unreal Engine 4 in the past, so imagine what he can make in this. This is giving equal amount of power not just to the fans, but also to official Star Wars game developers. So whilst we won't see many game developers using Unreal Engine 5 for official Star Wars games for quite a few years now, but when they do, we're going to definitely be entering into the next gen stage of gaming. But what are the Star Wars fans really capable of with Unreal Engine 5, let's say in the next couple of months or maybe a year. Well, let's take a look at someone like Fractal Sponge, who is probably one of the best Star Wars ship modelers. I obviously don't have to convince you guys, his work is just jaw dropping. Now imagine a scenario where a game developer decides to team up with Fractal Sponge and his models are used in Unreal Engine 5. Just taking a zoom in at his work can just show how much level of detail we could get in those fan Star Wars games. So who cares if we have to wait three years for official games to come out? Providing they don't get DMCA'd, I think this is going to take Star Wars fan games to the next level. So this is why you should really be excited for Unreal Engine 5. For those of you with an old graphics card quaking in your boots, do not worry because Nanite helps many older graphics cards as well. From channel It's Me Bro, he shows that Unreal Engine 5 with Nanite can render 10 billion triangles on an R9 3900 8GB whilst Unreal Engine 4 can only run at around 100 million. So you can see in this example, Unreal Engine 4 is struggling with these amount of models in one view and here Unreal Engine 5 just flexing with this much. It's actually insane. In conclusion, I hope this is inspires many budding game developers to try making their own Star Wars fan games. The only thing that's holding us back is the availability of ultra high poly models. If Fractal Sponge decides to release one of his 3D models or a very talented person decides to make a movie quality ISD which then they give out to the public, I think a good handful of developers could make next level Star Wars fan games with it. Either way, we're definitely shifting into the next generation of video games where realistic games are just going to have another level of greater detail. Whilst there might not be many Star Wars games out right now when I make this video, the future definitely looks pretty bright for it.
Well, that pretty much wraps up what I have to say about Unreal Engine 5 and how it impacts Star Wars games. What do you think about what I said in this video? Do you think it will actually help Star Wars games? Or do you think it's just a mindless upgrade that nobody will really care about? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I read all of them and I'll try to get back to some of you as well. Besides that guys, I've been Charlie, you've been watching X2 and I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.